What's up, y'all? And welcome to Technological and Environmental Transformations, Unit 1, From the Dawn of Man to 600 BCE. What you see here is an excavation of a place called Dra in modern-day Jordan. It is considered to be one of the earliest examples of human settlement. However, there is a great deal of uncertainty as to where and when the first permanent settlements came about. Nonetheless, what we do know is that thousands of years ago, our planet underwent a period of change. And, as a result of this change, people began to adapt from constantly traveling to hunt and gather their food to a more sedentary lifestyle, staying predominantly in one place while producing their own food. A typical question one asks is, what does any of this have to do with me? Well, the short answer is, everything. Here's another question for you. Why are we here? Why are we in a place called the United States, the most dominant country in the world, speaking English and not Chinese, for example? Why did we look the way we do, and how did this happen the way it did? It's no surprise that to answer these questions, we must look to history and geography. Uh, yeah! And since there's no better place to start than the beginning, we ask yet another question. When and how did humans populate the globe? In this first map, you see the world as it is today. The different colors here actually signify different regions. That's all they're showing. So we take a look, you can see North America, South America. You can see Western Europe and Northern Europe, along with Eastern Europe. You've got North Africa, Sub-Saharan Africa. You have the Middle East and Central Asia, along with Russia. Uh, you're also looking at South Asia anchored by India, and East Asia, anchored by China and Japan, Southeast Asia, Australia, New Zealand. Here you see the history of the Earth organized chronologically along the geologic time scale. The Earth was formed roughly around 4.54 billion years ago. Depending on who you ask, the first life, as we define it on Earth, likely emerged either around 3.8 or 3.6 billion years ago. And then, over half a million years ago, a major change concerning the variety of life on Earth began. During times of major environmental stress, fewer resources are available for all living organisms to consume. So a bottleneck may ensue, which is an acute reduction in the size of a population. Certain organisms inherit traits that prove to be better suited for the changing environment, so they in turn live on while others die off. This is natural selection. The need to adapt under changing conditions is a pattern that repeats itself in nature, and as we will investigate, these patterns exist in human nature as well. For example, around 542 million years ago, the Cambrian explosion occurred in which most complex life emerged, most likely due to some catastrophic environmental event. Much later, sometime around 250 million years ago, the supercontinent Pangaea began to break apart into the continents we know today. Looking back at the geologic record, the most recent era is extremely compressed, so that's what this second timeline shows. Around 7.2 to 7 million years ago, the first hominins, or hominids, emerged, indicating an evolutionary split from apes. Many scientists agree with the out-of-Africa hypothesis, that states our early ancestors originated in Africa and then began migrating to other reaches of the planet around 2 million years ago. However, new analysis of fossils dug up in modern-day Greece and Bulgaria suggest our earliest ancestors could, in fact, be European. One of the most famous archaeological discoveries occurred in 1974 in Ethiopia, with the unearthing of skeletal remains of a female hominin dating back to around 3.2 million years ago. Famously, she was nicknamed Lucy, and she may have looked something like this. When we zoom in even further to the third timeline, we see the Pleistocene epoch, starting around 2 million years ago at the onset of the most recent Ice Age. This is the beginning of the Paleolithic Age, meaning Old Stone Age, when hominins used stone tools made from chipped stone. Hominins formed bands of hunter-gatherers, or hunter-foragers, in groups of around 50 people, almost constantly on the move following the seasons as well as available game. Hominins also developed increasingly diverse and sophisticated tools as they adapted to new environments. One of these tools was the controlled use of fire, allowing early man the ability to cook food and provide warmth, as well as protection from predators and insects. 
These hunter-gatherers were essentially egalitarian, meaning they were largely equal, and that they had to work together to survive. These bands exchanged ideas, goods, and even people. And as early as 300,000 years ago, or as recent as 200,000 years ago, around eastern, southern, or perhaps even northern Africa, Homo sapiens emerged, meaning consciously thinking man. To put the history into perspective at this point, if the age of the Earth was scaled down to a 24-hour period, humankind doesn't emerge until 11.58 p.m. plus 43 seconds, a mere 77 seconds until right now. To put that in another way, mankind has been around for about 0.004% of Earth's existence. For millions of years, long periods of glaciations saw the expanse of ice sheets spreading from Antarctica and Greenland, offset by shorter periods of interglaciations, in which the ice sheets receded. A leading theory suggests these glaciations are related to time periods of lower solar activity resulting in a greater likelihood of supervolcanoes. One of the most devastating eruptions occurred around 70,000 years ago with Mount Toba, around Sumatra in modern-day Indonesia. The human race dwindled to as few as 10,000 people at that time. Despite these major bottlenecks, humans survived and migrated across the globe over thousands of years. Depending on the starting point, humans likely diffused out of Africa, but may have migrated from Europe. Next, groups spread into the Middle East and continued westward throughout Europe and eastward into Asia. Early humans also migrated into Southeast Asia and traveled from Indonesia to Australia, perhaps around 60,000 years ago, utilizing boats. Due to the Ice Age, sea levels were lower due to extensive glaciers, creating land bridges where water flows today. Sometime between 30,000 and 15,000 years ago, people migrated across the Bering Land Bridge and into North America. Some fossil records and archaeological digs suggest some may have traveled by boat down the west coast as well. A well-known and distinctive group of Paleolithic people are referred to as the Clovis culture, named after Clovis, New Mexico, where many cultural artifacts were found, including stone-made projectile points, referred to as Clovis points. Later, people spread into South America. The last areas where humans migrated was into the Pacific Islands, and even across the Indian Ocean to Madagascar as recent as 3,500 years ago. However, these people were not hunters and gatherers. They were farmers, and perhaps traveled with the intent to colonize new lands. Wherever people went, they developed technologies such as basket weaving and the production of pottery. They left behind ornaments, beads, and even artwork. They established settlements, buried their dead, and often altered the environment, cutting down trees and hunting wild animals. Humans had indisputably become the dominant species of the planet.